food delivery apps are an interesting case study for designing a database. There are multiple types of users and many features in the app. In this video, you'll see a database design for a food delivery app, a list of requirements it's been based on, and an explanation of the design and how it meets those requirements. The goal is to help you improve your database design skills. Let's get into it. There are eight requirements that this design is based on. We'll go through them one by one as we look at the design shortly. In summary, they allow customers to order items from a restaurant and have them delivered by a delivery driver to their address. Let's look at our design. Here is our design for the food delivery app database. You can get a link to the image of this design using the link in the description. I've designed this using a tool called Lucidchart. Let's go through each of our requirements to see how they are met. Before we do, if you want to have an easy to follow checklist for making sure your database is well designed, check out my database normalization checklist in the description below. It's a checklist of a range of things you can look for in your database design to ensure it's efficient and well designed. The first requirement states that customers can choose a restaurant and place an order for food from the restaurant. How can we do this in the database? We have a customer table here. It has a primary key of ID, like all of the tables in the database. We also store a first name and last name. We could store more information here, but we don't yet have any requirements to do so. To choose a restaurant and place an order, they would then create a record in the food order table. The customer ID is a foreign key here and is linked back to the customer table. They would select a restaurant which is from the restaurant table here. The restaurant just has a name and is linked to the food order table. Something we could add to the restaurant table is the cuisine of the restaurant, but we have no requirement for that yet. In the food order table, we have the order date time column, which is when the order is placed. How can they order food? Let's look at requirement two. The second requirement is each restaurant has different menu items and prices. We've done this in our diagram by adding the menu item table next to the restaurant table. A restaurant can have one or more menu items, each of which has its own name and price. A menu item could be a pepperoni pizza or a korma curry. We could expand this to allow users to modify the items in their order by adding or removing ingredients to an item. I haven't added it to this design, but it's something that is common in food delivery apps. If you want to do that as an exercise, feel free to. So we've got our menu items. How do we add them to an order? We have another table here called Order Menu Item. This stores the menu items that are included in each order. This has a link to the menu item to specify which item is ordered. We also specify the order ID. We specify the quantity ordered because the customer may want to order more than one of the same item. What's next? The third requirement is customers can specify a delivery time, either ASAP when the order is placed or at a future time. This can be implemented in our database by adding a requested delivery date time field to the food order table. The app can ask the user if they wanted ASAP or to select a time. It would then store this delivery time in the requested delivery date time field. We've called it requested delivery date time because having a field called delivery date time might imply that it is the time when the delivery was completed. We want to make it clear that this is the requested time. The fourth requirement is customers can store multiple delivery addresses on their profile. We do this by having a table called address. We've used the same structure for addresses as my e-commerce database design video. So if you haven't seen that video, you can watch it here. We have a range of fields for an address and a separate country table to store a list of countries. The address is related to a restaurant as a restaurant exists at an address. It's done a little differently for customers. We can have multiple addresses for a customer, so we have a joining table in the middle. This stores an entry for a customer and an address. This customer address table is also linked to an order. It allows an order to be sent to a specific address for a customer. Requirement number five is restaurants can accept the order and update the status of the order as it is made. This can be done by having an order status for an order. We have created a separate table to store the list of possible values, and the food order table has a link to this status table. The app can handle the functionality to allow restaurants and perhaps delivery drivers to change the status. 
the database will store it in these columns. We could have statuses for orders submitted, order accepted by restaurant, preparing order, order ready for pickup, delivery in progress, and delivery completed. We could also have other problem statuses like order cancelled. Requirement 6 is delivery drivers can pick an order to deliver to assign it to themselves. We've done this by adding a new table for delivery drivers, where we store the first and last name. We're not sure we need much more than this at the moment. We capture the assignment of an order to a driver in the Assigned Driver ID column. The driver could use a feature in the app to select an order and assign it to themselves. The seventh requirement says delivery drivers can pick up an order that is ready from the restaurant and deliver it to their customer. This could be done mostly within the app. Perhaps the app could show all orders that are ready that the driver has assigned to themselves. Or it could inform the delivery driver that an order status is changed and is now ready. We've designed for this in our earlier requirements, so I don't think we need to make any changes here. Our final requirement, number eight, is customers can rate delivery drivers and restaurants. We've done this by capturing the driver rating in the Cust Driver Rating field on the food order, as they may want to specify different ratings for different orders. We can review the restaurant by storing the value in the Cust Restaurant Rating column too. Using these columns, we could use a one to five rating system or a positive or negative value system or some other system. It's up to the food delivery app there are a couple of other features to point out in this design. There's a delivery fee column on the food order table to record what the delivery fee is. We also have the total amount column on the food order, which is a calculated value that the customer is charged for the order. It includes the prices of the menu items that were ordered and the delivery fee. It allows a customer to see what their amount is, even if the restaurant changes their prices in the future. So that's how I would design a database for a food delivery app. I've got a link to an image of this diagram in the description below. Also, if you want to get a copy of my database normalization checklist, check out the link in the description below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions or comments on the design, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.